Titus chapter 3 verse 15. Bible says, all who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Um, here it's talking about how the evangelist must learn to be considerate. So, first of all, what is consideration? Or, what does the Bible say about John chapter 13, verses 3, 4, and 5. There Jesus says this, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. He goes on in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 44, and he says something even more extreme. He doesn't say just love this time. He says, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. says that, I don't think he means like, um, be weak and just submit to everybody, but that's how great our love must be. It must be so great that even if people hate us, we can still love them and embrace them. And you see it in Paul's confession in Romans chapter 10, or in Romans chapter 13. says, love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So if you really love somebody, you're not going to harm them. Well, I mean, if you have um, your neighbor, and you really got close to them, and you really love them, not in a sense, like a physical sense, but in Christ, are you going to wait until your neighbor leaves, break into his house and steal his TV? If you really loved him, I'm saying. That's how you show your love, right? You steal their TV. So it says, love does no harm to a neighbor. First John. Chapter 4, verse 7, and verse 20. And verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So, sort of he's saying, if you're born again, you're naturally going to be able to love people. Right? Everyone who loves is born of God. In verse 20 it says, if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? It's kind of a scary thought. If you have anybody right now that you hate, it says, you don't love God, in this verse. you have people you hate. Uh, I don't suggest you do. It's not a good thing. But if you are a child of God, basically this verse means it's impossible to hate anybody. Because you can't love God and hate other people. That's what it says. So then, how can we love other people? Good 
first of all, we need to know God's love. In John 3.16, you can see the love of God. If you don't know the love of God, you cannot love other people. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5.8 says, In this, God demonstrates his love for us when Christ died on the cross. So there's God demonstrating his love. But you take it one step further. Go back to verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It doesn't say God just loved the world and he showed his love in Christ. It says that same love is in, is in us. Hope, now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in your hearts, or in our hearts, by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. So it says, we have the love of God already. And if God sent Christ to save the world from all the problems they faced, and we have Christ, and we have that love, then... Look what he says to the believers. This is what Jesus says right before he ascends into heaven. Now this is something that's impossible if you don't have the love of God. And what he says here is he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. That's how he wants to show his love to the world. Now, when Pastor Yu talks about, you know, how can disciples to the end you need to do the work of protecting the evangelist to the end, and even says how to do the work of raising the remnants, and all those things. You don't know this or this, this, <laughs> this love that God has given, then it's very hard to do this. And how are you going to help others? And even going beyond that, I'm not saying here that you guys have to go out and help others. I mean, if you can, if you have that heart. That's, that's great. Um, but we need to be able to see where our faith is personally. And one of the things that I've seen is just be honest before God. If you feel you really don't want to evangelize, or you know, it's a burden, or you feel you can't do these things, you, you tell God that. You can ask, well... And the reason I brought these verses out for you is that during the week, you can look at it and think, well, why would God say that? If there's a difficulty for you to embrace certain people, to help other people, then you can ask God, well, why do you tell me to do this? I don't want to do this. God is not a God that he's going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. And that's how amazing God is. Um, if he was a God that was going to do that, then he would have basically, um, well, in my, sin, my uh, perspective, he probably would not allow us the blessings that we have. Because he could easily say, okay, once you believe, you work for me. You pray all day, you read the Bible all day, you evangelize to everybody you see, 
for I strike you down with lightning. He could have done that. It would have been his right, because we never got salvation because we deserved it. I did it. But he didn't do that. God will never tell you to do something you don't want to do. He wants to give you blessings upon blessings upon blessings. That's why we're in Christ. The reason he brought us into Christ is because he wants to bless us. Not because he wants to make us work. <laughs> now, if you want to work for God, that's great. I'm not saying don't. But that's not why God called you. In a sense, it is. But those works don't come because you force yourself to do it. Those works come because you realize how many blessings you have. It's like, well, say, after this example, I'll close, but you have a person who was an orphan, and they lived thinking they're an orphan, and grew up thinking they had no parents. So one day, one day they find out they do have parents. Now they don't just have parents, but their parents are multi-millionaires. How would you feel, first of all? You think, wow, if I found my parents, you'd be happy, but your parents are millionaires. So probably you would boast all your friends, hey, look at me, I'm, I'm going to be a millionaire. Right? Nobody told you to do that. You didn't, they didn't say, okay, go tell them. Right? It's the same thing with us. If you know what you have in Christ, it's automatic. When it says in Romans 5, 5 that the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, it means it's there. Also, um, another verse that I like that it shows, I didn't put it here, but also in Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He who gave his one and only Son for us, won't he, along with him, graciously give us all things? That's hard. That's God's heart. He wants to give us everything in Christ. That's how precious we are to God. So, um, we have another message. But, if we can... During the week, it would be great if you just take a moment to look at these verses. Think about what God already gave you. Before um, saying we have to do something for someone else, if you're going to do something for someone else, you need to know what you have already. possible. Um, it's sort of homework. I mean, if you really don't want to do it, I can't make you. But out of all the verses that I wrote down, pick one. I mean, you can look at all the verses if you want. I'm not saying don't look at the other verses, but you can pick one that you like and memorize it during the week. Think about it. The one that gives you strength. one that you receive grace from. That said, we'll take a moment to and pray for ourselves. And that this week we can simply hold on to the blessings that we have already been given in Christ. And enjoy that.
I thank you that in Christ you have given us amazing identity and authority. I thank you that you've given us amazing blessings. And I pray that throughout the week that you would allow us to simply enjoy and hold on to what we've already gained. And as we learn to enjoy those things, that you would um, help us to grow in faith according to your word. That we can be people that others are blessed because of. That because of anything that we do, other things would be blessed. Other people would be blessed. Again, I pray that today as we even listen to the word, that you would open our ears and our, our, and our hearts to hear your words. That we can hold on to it as our covenant, as our promise. And have victory this week. Again, I thank you. Give you all the glory.